Right. Hello everyone. So we are okay. This is Meg here, and she's go, doing a grant proposal for uh, for Neighborwoods North with Tree Canada for what's called their edible tree program, which are nut and fruit trees and woody woody shrubs that produce berries. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. And is this um, for a, a general one, or is it for a specific area? Um, that's around here well we're we're hoping to to intersperse the the edible trees with other trees mm -hmm. I, I think that's the plan okay <laughs> okay mm -hmm. uh, and so they would be some in the forest and some along the healing path and okay yeah. mm -hmm. and where is the uh, so are what are we on now well, oh, this we are right now. Um, this is will be, is will be the forest of hope and healing, mm -hmm. and it takes in the north northwest corner of the of the hospital property. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's a mixed conifer and deciduous mm -hmm. forest, and. Are there any fruit trees here already? No, there are no no fruit or nut. Uh, oh, right. oh. I, um, there's flowering crab apples. Oh, okay. Uh, so if you make crab apple jelly, then yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, but those are mm -hmm. along the 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 roadway over there. Okay. So what what's along the roadway over there? That's oh, the, the crab apples. The crab apples. Yeah. Okay. And where's the uh, path of healing? The, the healing path will be a 1.7 kilometer path all the way around the hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it will go um, kind of. If you start in the corner the, there, um, to to the right of where the helicopters come in, mm -hmm. and it just goes all the way around and to the other side of the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the hospital owns quite a bit of land over on the. Um, the other side, mm -hmm. and then it'll go through the uh, cul culvert here, and mm -hmm. and, and up, up this hill, and, and up the, back up this hill, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. eventually we'll have, uh, in addition to the 1.7 kilometers, we'll have paths connecting to the hospice, and if they do the development of the, the Braemont development it will connect to that and that and their trails over there in that development I believe connect to a bike path too oh wow yeah that's great that's great so so the whole community benefits the, oh yes that the whole community uh, the the staff the patients uh, anyone who's lives nearby and or uses a, the bike path or, mm -hmm. yeah wonderful Wonderful. And so, uh, do you, so what's in your grant proposal right now? Do you have the species, or is uh, um, it just? Uh... We're going for the, pretty much mm -hmm. the basics: uh, okay. ap apples, pears, um, some some berries, and uh, just trying to figure out which would be the best to grow in in this soil. Oh, okay. Because yeah, I know there's uh, there's a lot of uh, nut trees. And uh, oh yeah, that we, would do well. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We're looking at there's a native. We have a native hazelnut that I didn't even know yeah, we had, the, but the, yeah, the beaked beaked hazelnut, I believe, is, is a native. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. We're not going for walnuts because they tend to kill off everything around oh, yes. them. I know there's chestnuts as well, and yeah, ha hazelnuts are are the other main uh, contender. Yeah, um, and I know butternuts uh, are are they in the walnut family? I don't believe so. I, oh, okay. I I'm still looking into the things. Yeah. And yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I know there's also lots of different uh, shrubs with berries. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, shrubs can like we don't want to get into raspberries because they get pretty wild and pretty. Uh, they grow. We'd have to put them really way over because uh, because of the the way they grow. But, uh, is it because they're prickly or? Uh, um, well, par partly because they're prickly, but they t tend to take over. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. and we don't uh, want that to happen. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, so we're looking more at, at 
blueberries, gooseberries, mm-hmm. um, some other berries I looked at, and I can't remember the names. Well, I know, the currants. Uh, currants, go- yeah. Gooseberries are a kind of a clone, but uh, currants are, uh, we have native currants. Yeah, cur- red currants and black currants. Currants, mm-hmm. and um, oh, and, the, uh, what, it's a Scandinavian berry, but mm-hmm. would do well here, mm-hmm. from what I understand. What, what's it, it called? It is a uh, Loganberry. Loganberry? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I, I believe that's a cross between a raspberry and a blackberry, or I I don't really know. Oh, okay. I, oh, okay. I, I know there's there's also lingonberry. Oh, maybe it's lingonberry I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Yeah. yeah. The, the, I know uh, bearberry is, is also called, considered a good ground cover. Uh, they're 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 evergreen and they're they're close to the ground and they're also very good for the uh, wildlife. Okay. I'm uh, not mm-hmm. sure that that, that would. <laughs> that would, that would be, be something that they would cover because mm-hmm. I'm not sure it's a woody enough shrub. Oh well, well it is, it is woody. It is yeah. evergreen, but <laughs> I, I just don't know what they oh, okay. consider a woody shrub and what they mm-hmm. don't consider a woody shrub. Oh okay. It, uh, the main reason I, I talk about it is because um, from my experience in uh, Toronto and other areas, is uh, often they just plant the trees, but they kind of neglect the ground cover, and then we have uh, invasive ground covers uh, such as these. Yes. that come in and uh, some of them like mustard garlic for instance uh, then they kill the trees yeah <laughs> and so it's good to have some kind of ground cover in there yeah to yeah. outcompete the uh, invasive ones yes right now because mm-hmm. our, there are trees most of our trees are so small that mm-hmm. one's not but yeah. uh, most of them are so small mm-hmm. we've been doing a lot of whipper snipping so mm-hmm. we haven't we haven't done a lot with ground cover mm-hmm. at this point in, in the forest Except mm-hmm. for, <laughs> <coughs> as I said, um, the whipper snipping and making sure that one of them got tilted over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And oh no, that can't be fixed. I, I think that one's going to go. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that. One, mm-hmm. And that's the other thing we do. When we do lose one, we do, do just pull it out and th- throw it onto the ground so that it mm. can mulch the... Or oh, it, there's, there's another one. And mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, no. Um, okay. I know there's... Uh, how about mulberries? Oh, yeah. That was one, another one I looked at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know there, there's also uh, sea buckthorn, okay. uh, which has uh, berries that are high in vitamin C, and it's a nitrogen fixer. Yeah, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, there's there's uh, hawthorn as well, and mm-hmm. yeah, the, the grant mm-hmm. actually um, application. I am allowed to purchase some nitrogen fixers in mm-hmm. also. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So well, uh, and I mean, and they are fruit bearing uh, nitrogen fixers. Yeah, so, yeah, some of the ones I've looked at I have been both, and some of them are, are strictly nitrogen fixers. Mm-hmm. I know there's there's also uh, cherries. Oh, and plums. Yep, Cher- here. cherries. Uh, cherries. I looked at mm-hmm. plums. Um, well, there's Canadian plum. Uh, I, I, I hear here it's not very big. Yeah, I was kind of um, advised to stay away from plums just because mm-hmm. of our soils are not the greatest here. Oh, okay, uh, I see. Uh, and, it needs good so. And yeah, and mm-hmm. that plums kind of like better soil than what we probably have. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, so did, did you guys do any soil tests? Uh, uh, no, no. Um, we just know that when they were originally built the hospital, mm-hmm. th- this is the area that they, <laughs> when they dug things out, they dumped stuff here. Oh, and, okay. And when you dig into this, believe me, you see, you, you see the fill. Oh, okay. Okay, and, I see. Yeah. Oh, so, so there's a lot of sand? Well, there's sand, there's cement, there's... Mm-hmm. Everything under the sun. Oh, it's side. rubble. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, currants, cherries, uh, apricots. I, I guess they would probably fit with the plums. Yeah. Um, in terms of needing quite a bit. Um, and so, were, were you thinking of interspersing it in this forest? Um. The, not so more along the, the path the path mm-hmm. um, 
Oh, okay. So people could pick it yeah. while they're walking along. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and how about grapes? Is that uh, uh, um, factor in or vines any kind? What do you vines? I'm. I'm I think what we're we're not re ready for for grapes yet. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering. <laughs> yeah. I know there, there's kiwi. Um, I, didn't, I didn't know that would grow here. Yeah, well, there's hardy kiwi, yeah, that grows here. Okay. Yeah, I have it in my yard, in my backyard. Oh. Yeah. And uh, there's also hascap, uh, though I'm not sure how well it will do, but it, there's, there's a chance it, it might do well. It, it's, it grows well in the prairies. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, also, it's, it's known as honeyberry as well. Okay. Um, and, oh, and one of the things with uh, blueberries, they require acidic soil. Yes. And I don't believe we have acidic soil around here. Uh, it tends because we're on a limestone yes. foundation. Yes. So it tends to be neutral or alkaline. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so yeah, was there there's some more you you wanted to mention about the no, um, the, mm -hmm. I can't think of anything. I think I've, I've covered everything. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, the grant also will, it's, it's not a, like it's a huge grant, but what they, uh, they'd also like us to include uh, some three years of, of maintenance. Three years of maintenance. maintenance. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. But which... Is fine because we're we're going to be here for at least ten years. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. that, that makes sense. So that's fine, and they'd also like to, to include a teaching component. And okay. so one of the things that we have been talking about as a group is a having a pruning workshop, and the in the uh, the group that inspired us, Neighborwoods in Alora. Mm. They do have some expertise in, in that area, so we may look mm. to them for that. Oh, okay. It, it's just my uh, my understanding was that uh, most of these um, don't, don't require pruning. Most, uh, like uh, it, for for natural types of forests. Oh, not not in the, in the forest per se, but some of oh. the fruit trees would. Yes. Oh, oh, that that's that that just seems so unusual. No. Uh, it be, be, well, it's it, it just um, oh, but but I I think that a really great educational component could be teaching people about edible fruits and berries and what parts they can eat and what they can't eat. Uh, because I know that there are uh, you know certain kinds of red berries like deadly nightshade that you shouldn't eat. Yes. And then other kinds uh, that we know are are growing here and that can be easily identified are edible. Mm -hmm. um, like I know, there's even like barberry and goji berry, and uh, uh, you know a, a bunch of other ones. <laughs> yeah, so we can get. So, so how much was the grant for? Oh, it, it's it's not a huge grant, but it's it's enough. It's thirty five hundred dollars. Okay, okay, thirty five hundred dollars. And uh, so you you were thinking of planting it along the paths mostly. Mostly along the path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so so was it kind of like in arm's reach kind of? Thing? Um, or... I believe so. Yes, I I still okay. have to talk to a little bit to the other committee members, but yes. Okay, okay, yeah. I I was just thinking because I know that sometimes people like to have them away from the paths because the fruit drop. Oh yeah, when mm -hmm. I say near the, uh, the the paths, I just mean, I do I don't mean right on the path or, mm -hmm. or anything like that but where you could see them from, mm -hmm. the, from the path yeah oh, okay. and I know you guys still have some undeveloped areas oh lots and, of undeveloped areas yeah and have you guys considered the Miyawaki method I don't know what that is so the Miyawaki method is um, it was originally developed in Japan uh, but it's since spread uh, all around the world and it's a way uh, where you can get a ten year a uh, hundred year forest in ten years uh, and so it, it requires planting um, uh, three plants per square meter uh, and so there would be like a shrub 
a dwar- uh, like a small tree and a canopy tree, for instance, mm-hmm. or it depends on the distribution, what you want to get later, and uh, that they're generally all, all compatible. And, and the minimum size is a four by four meter. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have, a, say, a five by five meter with edible plants involved, then that would be enough. Uh, it, it should produce enough calories to feed a person for a week. And if you have a 10 by 10 meter, that would be enough for a whole month. Okay. Uh, just, just as an example, say if, if you have even just uh, one uh, walnut tree <laughs> or, or a chestnut tree uh, that made it. Uh, yeah, so I, I think it could be a good experiment. But yeah, it does need other kinds of plants as well, like flowering plants. Uh, because, uh, for instance, there's... Uh, lots of pests or bugs mm-hmm. that get attracted to fruits correct uh, and so the things that you need to attract are predatory insects mm-hmm. and many predatory insects need uh, nectar in order to survive and uh, when the fruits are ripe is usually in the autumn and so none of the fruits are in flower mm-hmm. uh, so you need to have uh, something like butterfly bush that would be in flower at that time uh, to attract the uh, predatory insects. Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, well, w- w- was there anything else or no, n- th- th- that's not it for that now? I can think of. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I I know. Uh, was it Lloyd? Lloyd. He, 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 he was mentioning that uh, for the helicopter pad. It, they needed to be shrubs or yeah, yeah, or, or dwarf trees below yeah, uh, yeah. the uh, twenty foot height. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yes. Mm. So so yeah, w- I guess we can figure it out after that. <laughs> All right, great. Um, so I guess that's that's it for now. And uh, guys, have a good time. <laughs> And I hope you uh, accept this uh, grant proposal because you see it's uh, going to be benefiting a lot of people and uh, th- this whole community <laughs> will be uh, sharing in the food and they will know how to, uh, what to eat and how to pluck it and how to tend the, uh, the trees and the other things that are going around all right bye-bye oh and one last thing is uh, edible leaves since uh, a lot of the uh trees that have edible fruits also have edible leaves and so i guess we could also inform people about that yes yeah and so so some of the trees that which i guess wouldn't be covered by this grant uh but would still have edible leaves like there's red spruce and uh blue spruce and birch and basswood and all those. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that wouldn't be covered in this grant. Yeah, no. but I think mulberries would be, and they have edible leaves as well. Yeah. All right. Okay. <coughs> Bye. <Bye-bye. laughs>